this past summer, uh, I was able to uh, go to Algonquin Park twice. I did some canoe camping there. Uh, the first one was the first week of August, so it was the height of summer. And the second one was the end of September. So it's getting, starting to get cold. So I went there. Just want to experience what, what, what would it be like to be at Algonquin Park during the summer and what would it be like to be at Algonquin Park during the fall. The first one I went there, uh, I was with somebody, a good friend of mine, and we were there for six days. Okay? And, and we did not do some car camping. Okay? We went canoe camping. So we went to, we went, uh, we did some backcountry camping. And when you do backcountry camping in Algonquin Park, there's no electricity there, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no phone signal. Okay? So we went there, and we know the weather, uh, as you know, we could only know the weather forecast like two days. After that, we don't know already what will be the weather there. So we went there on Monday, this is the, the, the first week of August, so we were there Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, we went canoeing. We went to our campsite, unload all our stuff, and we saw that it was a beautiful day. No wind, uh, no big waves. It was a good time to canoe. So we went canoeing. So we were going to this, uh, to this lake, and on our way, suddenly, the wind started to pick up. And the, and the waves started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was like, for me, I, I, I'm very new in canoeing. And I have a very light canoe, less than 40 pounds. And with no gears, I was like really having problem uh, uh, paddling. So what we did, uh, you know, we had to, we had to go to, uh, we had to, to rest in a place just to hope that the wind would die down and that we could continue. But it wouldn't. So we said, we have to go. We, we can't stay there in, the, in that place. We didn't have all our gears or all our food, right? So we went, we continued, and then he was really paddling fast because of the strong wind. We want to arrive at our campsite as quickly as possible. And what happened there, so what happened there, he said, he said, okay, I'm gonna tie your canoe behind, behind my canoe. So that's what he did. So we were paddling, so there's a rope. So I was following him. What happened there was that what my canoe went sideways, and then the rope went underneath my canoe. So when he was canoe, when he was paddling, the, the 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 rope, you know, he pulled the canoe, and then my canoe went upside down. So I fell to the water. Okay, now the, the canoe didn't upside, but I fell to the water, and I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Like it was my first time to, 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 to fall to the water from the canoe. And then what he did was that he was, he's very experienced. You know, he, he's been um, leading like Boy Scouts to Algonquin Park for 24 years. So what he did was that he brought me to the shore. I'm glad like there was like a shore, like 300 meters. And there from the shore, uh, I went, we took out the water from the canoe and then I was able to hop in. And then there was like a still one, one kilometer to, go to our campsite. And with the strong wind, I was like shivering with cold. Okay, I, I was like really shivering. And then, so when, when we went to the campsite, uh, you know, we, we talk about what happened. And, uh, and little did we know, you know, when we, when we got home, when we got the news, we didn't know that we got caught at the tail end of a hurricane. We didn't know that. We were in Algonquin Park for a few days already, right? And so when, when we were at the campsite, we talked about what happened. It was a learning experience for both of us, okay? Be and we need to be always pre be prepared, especially in Golden Park. The weather could change suddenly, okay? That's why, you know, we said, okay, when we're gonna go canoeing, despite whether the, the weather is good or not, we have to bring, what, 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 what do we have to need bring? We have to bring matches. We have to bring a pocket knife. We have to bring some food and water. We have to bring some extra clothing instead, uh, in, uh, you know, in case uh, somebody falls into the water, right? We also bring, need to bring some compass and, or, or a GPS. And we didn't bring that. So we were not ready. 
Okay? I'm glad, you know, there was a sh uh, close by shore and the campsite uh, was just like a kilometer away. Imagine if we were just, if we were in the middle of the lake where it's like five kilometers or 10 kilometers to our campsite. I don't know what could happen. So there's a lesson of always, we need to always be prepared of whatever circumstances that could come to us. And in our gospel today, that's the lesson also. If you listen to the gospel, right? We need, to, it's, it's a lesson of being prepared. Now, the setting of our gospel today is that there are 10 bridesmaids. They were waiting for the bridegroom to come. The bridegroom went to fetch his future bride. Okay? And there, there's a tradition of having like a party. And the party could last for seven days or more. Not like here, you know, the wedding, one day, reception, you go back, right? There, the Jewish tradition, seven days or more. So the bridesmaids didn't know when the bridegroom would come. And finally, when the bridegroom come, came, what happened there, five of them were wise. They were able to bring some extra oil so that the lamp would continue to light. And their other, the five other foolish one, they didn't bring any oil. So they went to buy some oil and it was too late. You know, the, the bridegroom with the, with, the, with, the, with the bride would go there and then the bride, bridesmaids would escort the bridegroom and the bride to the wedding banquet. So when they enter the wedding banquet, the, the, the five foolish one were not able to enter. Now, what's the significance of this, right? What's the significance of the oil? Okay, they didn't have oil, and because if they didn't have oil, okay, they didn't have the light to lamp, to, uh, for the lamp. And the oil there signifies the Holy Spirit. And we know the Holy Spirit is the love of God. Okay? And, and, and you, you see, both the, the whole ten of them, they used to have that oil in them. But five had some extra, and then the other five ran out of oil. What, what does that signify? You know, these bridesmaids, it, it, could, it could represent all of us, wherein we're following the Lord. Okay? We experience the love of God in our life, and then we started to forget our first love. That's what happened. The oil signifies the love of God in our life. As we experience more and more the love of God in our life, that's how we will be able to love God and love others in return. And, you know, in, 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 in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, there's, there's um, a letter there written, uh, lit, written there to the church of Ephesus. And it says there in, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, it says there, you know, Jesus was rebuking the church of Ephesus. Okay? It says there, this is what I have against you. You do not love me now as you did at first. Okay? So that's what happened. They lost the fervor of their first love. And I've experienced this. I had a conversion in 1992. Uh, you know, I got... I went through the Life in the Spirit seminar and I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and I was full of the love of the Lord. And I was so in love with the Lord, you know, on fire, uh, in loving Him and loving others. After a few months, I started to backslide. I went back to my sinful ways. I lost the fervor of my first love. I was wise, I became foolish. Hopefully right now I'm becoming wise again. Okay? So we need to return to that first love. For those of you here, maybe some of you here have not experienced the love of God in your life. Maybe it's all head knowledge. The Lord is inviting you to experience His love for you. Okay? And maybe some of you have experienced that love. Maybe you've lost that fervor. 
the Lord is inviting us again to return to that first love. So, what's the significance of the oil? And so now, this is the significance of the oil. Now, what's the significance of the lamp, the light? We know that the lamp, the oil, lights the lamp. Without the oil, you won't be able to have a to have that light. And that's what happened. Because the foolish ones, the foolish virgins, they ran out of oil. That's why they didn't have light. What does the light signify? The love, the, love the, the light there signifies our good works. In, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it says there, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Good works. Okay? Now, so when we experience the love of God in our life, we want to love God and to love others in return. And that love could be by our service, by our giving, by our forgiving, whatever. Whatever that shows our love for others. And we should let other people see this. Now, we're not doing this to show off, okay? We, we're always pointing to the Lord, okay? He is the light of the world, and we are just the reflection of that light. You know, we, we, we can't, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, give it to ourselves the credit of what the good works that we're doing. It's all by God, by God's grace. And we're just cooperating by that, God, by, 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 by that God's grace. Okay, that's why it says here that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It's not, it's not saying glorify you. It's glorified to glorify our God, the Father in heaven. Okay, so that's what happened. If you don't have the oil, if you have lost that fervor of your first love, you won't love God and you won't love others. You will be so consumed by yourself. You will be self-centered in instead of God and other-centered. You will be inward focused instead of outward focus. Okay? So that's the significance of, of the light. Now, what happened there was that this is the greatest disaster that happened there. The five foolish came late. Okay? And what did they say to the Lord? Lord, Lord, open to us. Okay? Now, you might say, you know, the, 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 the bride's groom should have let them in. It's better late than never. Have you heard that, right? Better late than never. Now, in this, in this situation, better late than never doesn't apply. Okay? What did, Jesus, what, what did, the, what did the brides, what did the brides groom said to the five foolish one? Truly, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. That's the greatest tragedy. And because of that, the door was shut, shut off. And they were not able to to enter the wedding banquet. That's the greatest tragedy. It's not the great, the greatest tragedy is not losing your job. The greatest tragedy is not contracting COVID-19. The greatest tragedy is not, you know, being rejected or persecuted by people. No. The greatest tragedy is that when we die or when Jesus comes, he will tell us, I do not know you. And because of that, heaven, we will not be able to enter heaven. That's the greatest tragedy. Okay? That's why, that's why for us, it says here in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, knowing God, 
knowing Jesus. God is, Jesus is giving us an opportunity right now to know him in a very personal way so that we would experience his love for us and that we would be able to love him and love others in turn. Are we knowing Jesus? Are we getting to know him? Because it takes time. The reason why the five foolish, it took them time to buy the oil. Okay, it's not an instant that they could get the oil. And it also takes time for us to get to know Jesus. If you are loving this world so much, when he comes, it doesn't automatically change from loving this world to loving him. It takes time. God is giving you this time right now to know him in a very personal way so that you will be able to love him in return. So now, the question, now, the thing is, we don't know when. Two things that we don't know when. First one, we don't know when. When, how, where we will die. We don't know that. The second is, we do not know when our Lord will come again. So, we always need to be prepared. Every day. We need to prepare as if we will die, as if the Lord will come again today. There are only two sets of people there in the parable. One group are the wise, one group are the foolish. There's no semi-wise or semi-foolish there. Only the wise and the foolish. The question is, where are we? Are we part of the wise or are we part of the foolish? You have to bring that to prayer and ask the Lord. Okay? You know, St. Saint Saint Vincent de Paul once said, Our business is to gain heaven. Everything else is a sheer waste of time. Now, I'm saying we should not be doing any other stuff. You know, it's all spiritual. No, I'm not saying that. Okay? Whatever we need to do here on earth, it's always geared towards, okay, am I loving God? Am I loving others? Am I prepared every day to enter heaven? Okay? So, you know, let, let's imitate the, 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 the wise virgins. You know, they have this oil, you know, and they have this light always burning. Let's ask for that grace. As I've said, maybe you haven't encountered the Lord in a very personal way. Maybe you have experienced His love. Maybe this is the first time that you will know Him and love Him. Maybe for us, some of us here have, loved, have known the Lord and have loved Him, but have lost the fervor of our first love. So we need to ask for that grace, that we need to have, to, to, to have that fervor of our first love again. So that when he comes or when we die, we will be ready to enter heaven.